I can go ahead. I can go ahead. Okay. Oh. I gotta, I gotta kill my. That didn't work. Okay. I want to call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen for Monday, August 24th, 2020. Uh, we uh, open the meeting at 6 o'clock in executive session. Uh, pursuant to MGL C 30A, Section 21, Paragraph 3, to discuss respect to collective bargaining for Howitch Employees Association and the Highway Maintenance Employees Association. Uh, if an open session would have had a detrimental effect on the town's bargaining position and the chair so declared it. Uh, there was just further discussions of where we stood on that and how we would move forward. Uh, we also, uh, pursuant to MGLC 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 2, to conduct strategy sessions for contract negotiations for non-union personnel, interim town administrator, and we continued our discussions of the uh, contract that will be offered to the interim town administrator. Um, so let's uh, begin our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess we move ahead, uh, Joe, with the uh, weekly briefing COVID-19 update. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would turn it over to our health director, Megan Eldridge, uh, for the latest update. I know she has some uh, great news to pass along. Hi, guys. Um, hey, Megan. Hi. Hi, I'm hearing myself. Uh-oh. We only hear you once. Yeah. Okay, I hear myself. <laughs> I'll try to ignore that. Um, great news, we currently have zero active COVID cases in Harwich. Um, no new cases in about 10 days now. So all of the cases we were following um, have recovered. We have our total of 141 is still the same. So that is incredible, incredible news. We're doing really well with that. Uh, keep up the good work, everyone. We have um, a 0 0.89 positivity rate for testing. So we've got a total of 3,400 people in Harwich that have been tested so far. And uh, our positivity rate is significantly low and unchanged. Uh, one other update for you is that last week the Board of Health voted unanimously to amend the emergency order requiring face coverings, and this amendment includes requiring face coverings to be worn during uh, town meeting, not just during the meeting itself, but as you're walking in and walking out and getting to your seats for town meeting. So that's an important public health move that hopefully will make people feel comfortable going and attending town meeting next month. Right. That it? That's it. That's it. Unless you want to know something else. Well, it's all good news and that's a hard, you know, that we hardly ever have that. Uh, so thanks so much. That's um, you guys have done a fantastic job, obviously. And, uh, you know, it, it, it appears uh, that the people of the town are uh, are really observing the guidelines. So, you know, keep mm -hmm. our fingers crossed. We can keep that attitude going through the rest of the summer month here. So, uh. um, I did include in your packet, there was a question about Little League. Uh, I forgot about until just now. Um, someone had asked why there isn't Little League in town. And the answer is because Little League is a private organization that hasn't requested to operate in town. We we have um, specific rules within phase three of sports for both kids as well as adults. And baseball is allowed right now with specific guidelines and you can even have spectators if you want. Um, and I talked with Eric Beebe, the rec director, and he said that it wouldn't be something he would prohibit it in any way. It's just that the little league um, the league itself has not requested to use our fields. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, do you have a yeah um, no, we had received a, a letter uh, um, I, from a, I, I'm 
sure he's a parent. I had assumed he was involved with the Little League Association and questioning what the procedure was. He seemed, it seemed to indicate in his letter that he, they'd need uh, approval from the Monomoy School District. And I talked to the superintendent, Scott, and he says, no, they don't have anything to do with the, uh, of the Little League program. And it's, you know, uh, not uh, in their jurisdiction. Um, the interesting thing that Scott uh, uh, pointed out is that with their attempts to uh, get uh, elementary school children back into uh, uh, the schools as classes, uh, what they're planning on doing is keeping uh, each class together as a single unit. So if something happens to one of the children in that class, it only will affect potentially that class. Um, his concern with uh, any sort of extracurricular group activity that the children might be involved in that sort of take them into a group that is much more expansive than just their class, if something happens, then he's faced with potentially having to close the entire school because there'd be children in each class that would have been affected. So, but you know, that being said, he said it's still you know not our decision to make um, because we, they don't play on their on any of the school district fields and um, it's not one of their programs. Okay. Is that, that it, uh, Megan? That's it, unless you have other questions for me. I do have one question. I was asked by a, a couple of um, uh, uh, residents of the town who had read about the uh, Nantucket. Um, uh, I guess the, the Board of Health uh, voted in Nantucket to um, uh, stop the sale of alcohol after 11 o'clock at night in Nantucket and asked if we, yeah. I, I, they asked me if I'd ask if we had considered such a, such a move. They, they, that is correct. The, the Nantucket Board of Health, I'm not sure if they put um, an emergency order together or how they did it, but they did um, stop the sale of alcohol at restaurants after 10 p.m. Uh, mostly because they stopped offering food at that point and they just turned into a bar. So the, our Board of Health has not requested or talked about that. Um, before the governor's order specifically required food to be ordered at the time of a, a, a bar bill starting, um, I had thought about doing something similar, approaching that with the Board of Health and the Board of Selectmen. Um, but then that very week, the governor included in his safety standards the requirement that food must be ordered when you order a drink. So that kind of stops that bar scene a little bit. Um, and I was going to see how that went before we went to the Board of Health to do anything more strict. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just had a couple of folks ask me about that. So, anyway, well, thank you. Um, uh, I guess uh, next up, uh, our um, business community, uh, Cindy Williams. Unless Joe good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, I thought I'd share some um, exciting news. I mentioned last week I had some uh, exciting news, and uh, we did our the chamber held our uh, annual meeting virtually last week. Um, installed the new slate of officers. I thought I'd share that as well as the awards that we gave to our member businesses or organizations. So our new president will be Rich Kristoff of 400 East. The new vice president is Julie Dakota of KMD Plumbing. Suzanne Barry is the second vice president and clerk. And Peggy Nye from William Ravis is the new treasurer. We also every year give out awards to member businesses. I'm not going to go through the criteria because I know you guys have a full agenda, but I did want to share the award winners. Um, for business of the year, it went to Cape Cod 5, 
our best community improvement award. Um, we were excited to award to the, um, and I'm sorry to see that our new uh, fire chief is not on, um, but he was on our virtual meeting. The new uh, East Harvard Station 2 fire station was given the best community improvement award. Our emerging business went to Jay and Heather from Murphy's General Store. In their first year, they went through a tornado and COVID-19 and are having a record summer. So um, that was quite fitting. The continuing legacy is the Next Generation Award and that was given to Dave's Garage. And finally, the Jimmy Marceline Community Service Award. This is the third year we're giving this out in uh, in Jimmy's name, and that went to Team Guthrie Mabiel from Robert Paul Properties, who are extremely um, giving and uh, part of uh, a very strong uh, philanthropic community. So um, we just want to express um, how proud we are of all the members and the community, but also um, just continue to stress to please remind everyone to shop and support the uh, local businesses, especially as we go forward into the fall. Um, we have some new things hopefully we'll be able to uh, put together for uh, bringing more people into uh, the community during the fall and uh, winter months. So that's it from uh, the business community tonight. That's great. Thanks very much, Cindy. Appreciate it. Congratulate, uh, congratulations to all those businesses and individuals that uh, got the new appointments. So, um, we move to uh, public comments and announcements, and I just want to say I forgot at the opening to um, mention that the reason uh, uh, our chairman Larry is not with us tonight is he did have to have a, uh, a medical procedure and uh, is home uh, from the hospital and resting comfortably, so uh, he's on his well, on his way to repair. So. Uh, that's why he isn't with us tonight. Um, I don't know whether we uh, have any other announcements or... Uh, uh, the o obvious announcement is that Don Howell's in the same condition. Oh, well, right, that's right, Don. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there you go, two mistakes in a row for me. But, uh, 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 Don also has recently had some surgery and uh, was here for our executive session, but uh, it was obvious he was in a lot of pain and, and had to head home, so... Um, and I guess, uh, uh, Joe, do I need here to see with Jamie if there's any public comment? Uh, so um, before we ask, I would just, I know that there may be folks that are on the line mm -hmm. to talk about their petitioned articles. We'll cover that later in the meeting. Okay. Um, okay. Are you aware of anyone else? No, I checked at about four today. But yep. I haven't seen them, so okay. 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 All righty. Well, we'll move on to the uh, non-resident taxpayers video. And... Uh, Joe, oh, I guess you guys set that up for us, Jamie. Yep. Are you ready? Yep. Hi, everyone. I'm Carolyn Carey. I'm sure I know a lot of you, but for those of you I don't, I run the community center and I'm in charge of the cultural center and the seaside marketplace. And I'm so grateful to Channel 18, who's going to let us come in here and give you just a brief overview of what we do. Uh, but I will tell you a few times that if you need to know any additional information, don't hesitate to jump on uh, the town website and check us out under any of those titles, the community center, the cultural center, or the seaside marketplace. We have listings under all of them that will give you information on everything that we do. Things have changed just a little bit, probably since the last time we talked. Um, I have my mask in front of me, but I'm in a room all by myself, so I get to talk to you. But this is what you'll see if you come to any of our buildings, everyone is wearing masks. That's really important, um, even at the outside venues at the Seaside Marketplace. So let me tell you that our Seaside Marketplace is up and running down at Sacquatucket Harbor. You don't want to miss that. We have several vendors who are coming in um, in August. Look for the high tide designs, a lot of uh, Cape Cod, Harwich, Chatham, T-shirts, sweatshirts have great things. Seabreeze treasures. Um, anyway, our whole schedule is listed on our website. If you're interested in any of the marketplace, uh, it's a, such a wonderful place to go visit. It's outside. Please wear your mask, but just take in that venue. Uh, enjoy the harbor and check out the Seaside Marketplace. It is open and will be open all of August um, and into September. So don't miss that. 
Additionally, if you're interested in renting a space at the Cultural Center, some of you may or may not know, we do have some smaller spaces left available for renting. And you can find that information, again, on the town webpage. If you go to the Cultural Center, there's a whole packet on studio rental information that you can get. That's uh, at the Cultural Center at 204 Sisson Road. Um, Quickly, I wanted to let you know that if you are in the market or looking for the town reports, we do have them here. Our building is open, so you can come in and pick those up. I know some others are by appointment only. We're currently open uh, to the public and are happy to have you in. We're open until 4 o'clock right now. Our hours may change, and we'll update on Channel 18. Next, let's tell you about the community center. We do have some groups and organizations coming back. Um, we are meeting with smaller groups and we're trying to put people in larger rooms. Everyone must wear a mask. What's really important is that um, we can still do passport appointments, but people should know that is by appointment and that the passport agency themselves are running very, very far behind. So you wanna, I know people aren't thinking about traveling, but if you're going to be traveling later or your passport's about to expire, you do have some time, um, just give us a call. We'll help you through that process as well. So you can get your passports here. If you're looking for any of the clubs and organizations, give us a call. Some have decided to come back and some have not. So we will keep you um, informed about that. Our activity rooms can hold up to 10 people. The multi-purpose room is between 25 and 30 people. And the gym is anywhere from 35 to 50 people, um, depending on what we're doing and how it's set up. And all that information can be found on our website. I know I keep saying that. And the most important question that all of you are asking is when are we going to open the weight room? We are diligently working on it. Um, as you know, there are new rules and guidelines. And because ours isn't an actual gym, it's more of a room. We have to have enough distance between people. People will still need to wear their masks. If you don't wear masks, you have to be 14 feet apart, which would limit the amount of people much greater than what we have. We're currently looking at doing a sign-up system so people will be able to sign up for the hour that they want. We're going to have an hour and a half block, six people at a time. Um, and that information will be coming to anyone who's been a member of the weight room. We're going to do a robo call out just as soon as we get the go ahead uh, to open up. So we've been trying to make it as user friendly as possible and invite everyone in. And I know I'm talking a mile a minute, but three things I want you to remember. We're happy you're here. We hope we can help you. And if you need any more information, don't hesitate to give us a call or stop by the community center or check out our webpage. I'm Carolyn Carey and I thank you for listening and look forward to seeing you again. Stay well. Hi, my name is Eric Beebe. I'm the Harwich Recreation and Youth Director and Beaches. And I'm here to give you a little report on our uh, non-resident taxpayer meeting um, for beaches and everything recreation related. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go down my, my list here. Um, for our beaches this year, um, despite the current circumstances, as everybody knows, it's been an interesting summer. Um, we are fully functional at the beaches. Um, we have a full complement of staff. Uh, we have 32 lifeguards, seven gate attendants, three beach supervisors, and two parking enforcement officers. And we have a high rate of return this year for staff, which is great. We have a very veteran staff. Um, a lot of kids that were in college that lifeguard for us uh, had internships that were canceled. And um, unfortunately for them, but fortunately for us, we have them back. Um, we also have 10 new employees this year. They're called COVID compliance personnel. Um, they are monitoring all our town beaches uh, for following all the state guidelines as far as social distancing, masks, um, ball playing, anything that's allowed or not allowed at the town, be town beaches. And the response so far has been really good. Um, we've had uh, good interactions between staff and patrons, no issues at all, and we, we thank the public for that. Um, our parking, the differences this year uh, at the beaches, our parking restrictions currently in place 
are Pleasant Road Beach and Earl Road Beach. Um, those two, two lots are blocked off. Um, there's limited parking due to the amount of space on the beach and the amount of parking spaces applicable to them. Um, so we're not selling day, day light passes at those beaches this year. So that's, that's a big difference. Um, the only other parking restriction is Red River Beach this year. We have plovers down there. Um, they've been down there longer than usual. I know there's a lot of questions about that. Um, we've had the east end of the parking lot blocked off for quite a while now, and we're hoping that soon the plovers will hatch and move on, and we'll be able to open that up for more parking. Um, other changes um, were for our staff. We did extensive training for our staff, including lifeguards, everybody that's going to be at the beach, um, social distancing for the staff, uh, sanitizing, gloves, um, they're sanitizing all equipment before, during, and after shifts. Um, so they're doing a great job with that so far. Um, we're trying to keep everyone healthy on the beaches in this kind of different time that we're in. Um, the the beach, uh, beaches have been successful so far. We've seen a couple emergency situations, which our staff have responded to very well. Um, especially despite the, the, the new guidelines that they have to follow as far as emergency situations. So everything's been going well. Um, daily pass sales are doing well at the beaches. We're about 25% down due to Pleasant Road and Earl Road being closed to daily pass sales, uh, which was to be expected. But beach sticker sales are solid, which are bringing in good revenue for the town, um, which is good to hear. Um, we also have our mobile food vendors um, fully functional at the beaches, and that includes mobile mixers at Red River Beach and Bank Street Beach. Um, they have a full array of lobster rolls and hot dogs and grilled cheese and whatever you want to eat. Um, we also have our ice cream trucks going beach to beach. They're following all guidelines. They've been in contact with the health department, and uh, you can feel safe eating there. Um, as far as summer programming this year, Unfortunately, we had to cancel all our summer programming due to the guidelines that were put in place by the state and town officials. And uh, we canceled our summer camp, our tennis lessons, and our swim lessons. Um, we can't wait to get those back again. Um, we were able to reinstate our summer adult programs, including pickleball, um, with very restricted guidelines, what, what they can do, how many people can be there at a time. We're also renting out our fields and parks uh, to groups that want, and organizations that want to use them, which is another revenue source for the town, which is good for us. Um, we're, we're hoping to get back to programming as soon as possible. We're already trying to plan for the fall. Um, a lot depends on what the schools do. And we're going to follow that up, and we're going to do everything we possibly can to have the kids in here again. Um, the last things I kind of wanted to hit on were projects that we're doing with the rec department. Um, recently, um, in ongoing projects, uh, we're working on our final plans and specifications for the Brooks Park Improvement Projects, Phase 5, which includes a whole new LED, LED lighting system for Brooks Park. Um, so we should have that. Um, beginning work on that in the fall of this year. Um, we also have put together specs for a new precast concrete restroom at Sand Pond Beach, uh, which we're looking forward to and we hope to have completed in the fall. Um, we actually completed our community center fields fit station project. So we have new fit stations out there. They've been getting a lot of use, which is great because it's open air. Uh, people could spread out and kind of get some exercise in. So we encourage you to come down to the community center and get out back. And uh, they're, they're nice pull-ups, sit-ups, very simple, but it's good for people. Um, we're also putting together specif specifications, and we already have funding for a new scoreboard at White House Field, um, which we hope to have in before the 2021 season of the Mariners um, and the, the Harwich High School, or Monomai High School baseball team. Um, and we also had funding in place for 11 new lifeguard stands in town. Uh, we just had our first one constructed and put in by the Howard Highway Department uh, at Earl Road Beach. Um, Ten more are coming. Um, future projects. Um, we're excited. We have two projects that were just approved by the Community Preservation Committee, and we're bringing them to the annual town meeting in September. 
Um, one of them is a whole new lighting system at White House Field, all LED lighting, um, less ambient light, uh, many savings uh, for the town as far as electric bills. Um, we're also, uh, we, we requested funding and were approved for it by CPC for new fencing for Brooks Park baseball field. So we're excited to have that going in as well, but um, hopefully we get the votes, September town meeting for those two projects. And that's, that's what's going on with the REC. Um, it's been an interesting season adjusting um, to what everybody's going through. Um, we're trying to do our best to provide all the resources we can for the public um, to get to the beaches and, and have some recreational time and relax and have fun. And uh, hopefully we'll be back to normal in the fall. And uh, if not, we'll do our best to um, adapt and do what we can um, going forward. And uh, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Charlene Greenhouch and I am your town planner. Uh, we've been asked to do a little uh, uh, briefing for you in, in exchange for meeting in person uh, due to COVID. So a couple things that we've been working on in the planning department and also with the planning board. Um, we recently uh, finished a municipal preparedness plan, an MVP. We received a grant from the state to complete a vulnerability assessment and develop action oriented resiliency plans. We held a workshop, which was, was wonderful back in January with a number of different stakeholders who uh, uh, from different town agencies, but also a number of different businesses in town. Uh, due to COVID, however, we were unable to do a public listening session, which was one of the requirements. But instead, the Cape Cod Commission, who we contracted with, uh, prepared a really excellent video uh, which is available on the TEM website if you do wish to take a look at it. It's only about 15 minutes long and it really has a lot of valuable and, and really creative information. Um, the plan was approved by the state and now the town is eligible for funding to assist with the implementation. We've also been working on the West Harwich uh, District of Critical Planning Concern. This was a nomination that was approved by the uh, county commissioners back in December of 19. Uh, again, due to COVID, things have been a little slower than we had hoped, but we are moving along. We have been working with Cape Cod Commission staff to draft the required implementation regulations. Uh, we have had a couple iterations go before the planning board uh, for discussion to get some input. We do hope to have this on the September town meeting warrant. Uh, we actually do next week, although this will be airing after that, uh, doing a public session um, on uh, channel 18 and through go to my meeting, uh, which will also be rebroadcasted. So you'll be able to see it either on YouTube or check out the channel 18 station um, and, and you can take a look at it. We also have a really great uh, planning department webpage where there are a number of different links to a number of different do documents related to the West Harwich District of Critical Planning Concern. Another document that we have been working on is a revision to the multifamily dwelling bylaws. Right now, the existing bylaw is really quite onerous and overly restrictive. We are hoping to make it, it would still be a special permit process, but we're trying to cull it down and, and make it easier to follow within the zoning bylaw. Right now, it's kind of scattered all over the place. Uh, we have had several drafts which are, have been reviewed by the planning board and at last night's meeting, which was July 28th, the planning board did vote to refer the proposed zoning articles to the Board of Selectmen for their referral back to the planning board so the public hearing process can start. And hopefully that also will be on the September town meeting. I know they're trying to kind of call that down. Uh, to have that not be so onerous, um, but we are hoping we can get this on there because we definitely have a need for housing, um, you know, workforce housing here in the Cape and, and in particular here in Harwich. There's a great need for that type of housing. And also last but not least, and I think you've heard this before, but I am retiring um, in November. I know you heard that I was retiring in September, but frankly, due to the COVID situation, um, and having been a public servant for 33 years, I felt it was not appropriate for me to be retiring at that time. I knew that getting a new planner in here was going to be very difficult, um, if not impossible. So I decided to stay on through November. Um, I will definitely help the town to uh, 
you know, work with whoever that new person is that they eventually hire and try to make it as smooth a transition as I possibly can. So with that, um, thank you for allowing me to be your town planner over the last, I think it's three years now. Um, I've enjoyed it and I've enjoyed public service uh, for the last 33 years. Thank you. Hi, I'm Amy Usowski, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the Conservation Department for the Town of Harwich, what we do and what we've really been doing this year. So first, uh, the Conservation Department and the Conservation Commission is responsible for upholding the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Harwich Wetlands Protection Bylaw. What this entails is working with waterfront property owners to ensure that the projects they wish they do on their property be it building a new house, removing vegetation, really any alteration within the 100 foot buffer of a wetland or 200 feet of a river meets the state and local regulations. Our department consists of two staff members, myself as a conservation administrator and a assistant conservation agent. In addition to upholding federal, state, and local laws, our department and the commission, which consists of seven volunteer members, um, is also responsible for taking care over, of over a thousand acres of conservation land. We do this with assistance from the Harwich Department of Public Works, the Conservation Trust, and many volunteers. If you would like to volunteer with us, please contact me. In the past year, the Conservation Department and Commission has put an emphasis on trying to better manage our conservation lands. The Commission is currently evaluating alternatives on how to manage the old cranberry bogs in the Bells Neck Conservation Area, now that there is no longer a lease there. Options range from releasing, releasing the bogs to grow cranberries or other agricultural products, all the way to full naturalization. There will be a public meeting about this at the end of September or early October, and we urge the public to participate. You can contact our office for details. Um, you can go on the town website and find our contact information there, both phone number and email. Our department is also in charge of monitoring state listed shorebirds like piping plovers on our town beaches. Um, when I say state listed, that doesn't just mean endangered, it means threatened, species of special concern, et cetera. Many of you may have noticed the concrete barricades blocking off a section of parking at Red River Beach and symbolic fencing consisting of stakes and twine at both Red River and Bank Street Beach. By law, if the town wishes to clean their beaches or to keep beaches open to the public where state listed shorebirds are, we're required to fence off sections. This year, more of the birds nested than usually do on our town beaches. Once the chicks fly, we can remove those barricades. However, with more nests, we had more chicks this year over a prolonged period of time, which is why you may have noticed the barricades up for a longer period. Currently, all of our chicks have flown and all the barricades and fencing have been removed. We appreciate the public's patience and understanding this summer. Lastly, and in closing, if anyone is interested in more, more about what the Conservation Department does, would like to volunteer, please email or call me. You can contact um, us via the website. Our email is there as well as our phone number. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, my name is John Rendon. I'm the Harbor Master for the town of Harwich and I'd like to just give you a, a quick rundown of uh, some of the department's uh, activities and accomplishments over the past year. So um, with a staff of four full-time staff that we have and we augment with three seasonal positions, we provide, uh, you know, our core mission is providing maritime assistance uh, to mariners and vessels in distress. We enforce uh, mass general laws relating to vessel operations. We maintain our waterways through dredging operations. We uh, have a number of private town aids that we maintain, aids to navigation. We operate uh, our marine pump out facilities for boaters and uh, we manage a 202 slip marina that's very active during the summer. And we m administer the uh, slip mooring offloading permitting processes um, throughout our facilities. So from an operational perspective so far this year, we've had 35 uh, maritime assistance cases. What kind of cases? We have boat tows, groundings, um, boats needing to be dewatered, etc so it's been um it's been a busy busy season so far um we maintain patrol boats and pump out boats uh, at sacquatucket harbor 
uh, over on Round Cove, the Pleasant Bay side, and we also have a, a, a patrol boat always on Long Pond that we that we patrol. So let's talk marine operations. So far, it's been a busy season. You know, obviously we are in the COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, circumstances, and yet um, our marine operations have um, have remained strong. Um, we're full. Uh, between our permitted boaters and our transient boaters, uh, it has been a very um, active season. Uh, how has it impacted us? Well, you know, our Harbor Master Office is open to the public, but with restrictions. We only allow one person in at a time. And of course, um, anybody who comes in has to have a face covering, as does uh, our staff. Um, from a boating perspective, uh, we're currently operating under phase three of the state's um, COVID restrictions relating to boating operations. So what does that mean in general? All of our public boat ramps are open to the public for use uh, as long as there is parking available. Um, no loitering at our ramps or landings are, are, and parking areas are supposed to be happening. Social distancing is required anywhere at the marina, anywhere at the marina, anywhere at the public boat ramps. And if you can't social distance, then you have to have face coverings. Um, commercial fishing has continued throughout. It is a um, it is a uh, essential service. So so that continues. Um, six pack operations, charter boat operations, just allowed as part of phase three. So they are operating. Um, and they have some added requirements relating to uh, cleanliness and hygiene protocols that have outlined, as has uh, passenger boats. So our passenger boats, which are Coast Guard inspected vessels, are larger boats that take typically a uh, large number of people. They are allowed at a 50% capacity to operate. And again, they have added hygiene and uh, cleaning protocols. Um, at the marina, uh, the snack shack uh, that uh, is leased from the town last year was their first season. They had a real good first year, exceeded revenue targets, and therefore the town realized some additional lease revenue from that. Um, but this year, just like all restaurants, they've been, been impacted. They're opening, they're operating, um, and we'll see how, how the year shakes out. The artisan sheds that again were a new addition to our uh, to our marina last year, a, a real good first season, uh, but they have definitely been impacted. And so we've had a couple open um, and, and remain open, but nothing like uh, we had last year. Um, our harbor revenues for end of fiscal year, which just just ended end of June, um, are strong. They remain strong. The department ended the fiscal year with approximately $1,361,000 in revenue generated uh, from our harbors. Uh, dredging happens every year, and, and uh, this past year, uh, this past season, uh, we dredged Allen Harbor Channel, which pretty much is every year because we have chronic shoaling in that channel. The Barnstable County dredge removed 6,074 cubic yards of material. And we also dredged Witchmere Channel. And again, the Barnstable County did that work and they removed 1,754 cubic yards. All of that material was put on our public beaches uh, for nourishment. We um, added uh, good sand to Greyneck, Earl Road, Wauwatosi, Atlantic and Ocean Avenue beaches, uh, Pleasant Road Beach, and we actually trucked uh, sand over to Red River. So. Uh, good dredge season and some good nourishment for our public beaches. Um, as was the case last year, we again received a uh, state grant from the Mass um, Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development, $36,000 to put towards our dredging costs. So that was a, a, a good thing. Some of the upcoming projects that the department has, uh, our Round Cove boat ramp, um, uh, we're trying to replace that ramp we had the design and permitting of that project completed by GEI Consulting, uh, contracted with GEI Consulting. Uh, we put it out to bid. The town received two competitive bids for that project. The low bid came in at uh, $219,483. So 
Um, moving forward, we require town meeting approval for some supplemental funding in, in the amount of about $106,000 to complete that project. So whenever town meeting happens, uh, we'll see if that, uh, if that gets approved. My hope is that we can start that project late fall or, or early spring upcoming. And then the other project that we have ongoing, Allen Harbor Jetty uh, Rehabilitation Study is being done. Allen Harbor Jetty, the West Jetty is, is porous, it's in poor shape, and one of the reasons we have to dredge Allen Harbor Channel every year. So we're trying to look at that and see what can be done um, to improve that situation. So again, we've contracted with GEI Consulting and they're gonna do a site investigation, uh, prepare preliminary uh, concept design to be briefed up the chain and uh, prepare uh, um, regulatory submittals and then hopefully come up with a final design that we can take and look to uh, improve that jetty. So all in all, um, been a good season so far. Um, very active, very busy uh, waterways. I think people uh, are anxious to get out on the water. So all is good. And if you have any other questions, um, you can contact me. Thank you. Okay. All set? Okay. I will obviously want to thank our department heads for their presentation. And uh, if any of our non-resident taxpayers or anyone that's watched the video have other questions, uh, please feel free to contact them through the website or, uh, or their contact information that is on the website. Uh, any other comments from my colleagues on the board here? No? Mr. Chairman, just that this, yes. that is the second of three installments. One more to go next week. One more to go. Okay. So next week we'll have uh, another series here. Uh, and hopefully uh, all of the non-resident taxpayers find it helpful uh, in better understanding our town. Uh, we move on to new business minutes uh, to approve uh, June 15, 2020. I move that we approve the minutes for June 15, 2020. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, Ed? Aye. Michael? <coughs> and I'm an aye. Moving on to old business uh, discussion, possible vote uh, to name Joseph F. Powers interim town administrator for a 90 day period. Uh, to expire, expire no later than November the 18th, 2020. Uh, Joe, I believe that your most recent appointment has expired, is that correct? Uh, last week. Which is why we've come uh, to this point. Um, I, I do want to say that I, I know there's been some concern expressed uh, by folks in the town relative to the limitations placed on us in the charter um, as to our ability to, to make this appointment, these appointments. Um, I want to assure you that we have had uh, extensive consultation with council uh, and council believes strongly that we do have this ability based on a number of uh, different interpretations of both the situation that we find ourselves in, uh, i.e. COVID and uh, the leeway the state has given us relative to how we govern, um, but also the interpretation of the, of the uh, charter itself. And I do appreciate uh, the concerns that people have expressed relative to this. Um, uh, we wish that we haven't had to do this so many times in a row, but we do need to do it at this point in time. Uh, and uh, so we'll move ahead uh, and, uh, you know, if I have a motion. Uh, I move that we uh, uh, vote to name Joseph, Joseph F. Powers Interim Town Administrator for a 90-day period not to expire or to expire no later than November 18th, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. It's been uh, moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Okay. No. All those in favor, Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye. So it's a unanimous vote. Uh, moving on to update on annual town meeting logistics. Uh, Joe, I'll, uh, I'll turn that over to you unless you want me to read uh, the town moderator's note into the into the record, uh, you, well, you tell uh, actually, me how you want to handle it. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's um, that's one of several items that will come under this topic of um, town meeting logistics. You heard one of them already from our health director that the board of health has uh, mandated a face cover or co face covering order. Uh, in a moment, I'd ask our town engineer to uh, walk you through the logistics to date. I know that uh, Griffin has done a great job working with DPW, who's done a great job working with the school department. 
Um, I know that the moderator has been kept abreast of all of this, so uh, what I was hoping this evening is to have our town engineer talk about yeah. the actual logistics of the day itself, uh, where we are right now, and then, as you've mentioned, there's a couple procedural items that I want to bring to the board's attention. Okay. So uh, with your indulgence, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask um, for our town engineer to weigh in. That would be great. Griffin. Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, so I, I think you've, you've seen the, pl the plan in your packet. Uh, I can just walk you quickly through that. Um, you know, based on information provided by Joe through a meeting um, that was held uh, maybe a, a couple weeks ago uh, as a walkthrough at, at the stadium. Um, the idea was to provide uh, approximately 500 seats uh, in an arrangement of one and two um, seats and provide, you know, six feet of spacing at a minimum around each one of these seats to allow people to, you know, whether they have to wear masks or not, at least they can feel spaced out and, and feel somewhat comfortable uh, having space around them. So what this is, is what this, the, the plan shows overlaid on the, on the field, an aerial of the field, is a series of, of rows of you know, 24 and 23 seats um, in an arrangement of one, two, one, two, uh, in, the, in that series uh, for each one of these. And then each one of these rows um, of seats uh, separated by uh, with a, two feet to give you a little bit of a walkway in front of you and that's in addition to the six feet around you so um, just to try and provide spacing you know there's there's a, a, a lot of spacing on the field um, you know trying to provide spacing but not push people too far too far back uh, we try we developed uh, four quadrants which I believe was a, a request of the moderator um, so there's a larger aisle of 12 feet you'll see uh, sort of an across um, that, that creates these these four quadrants. Uh, we also created uh, what at the time was going to be a no mask area. Um, now I don't believe we will need that uh, because of the ordinance that's going into place. So so we could uh, quite simply slide those seats up or provide potentially provide some seats um, on the track that might be a little bit closer to where um, uh, you'll see where the moderator and the town clerk are in the uh, northern um, uh, end zone, right beyond the end zone there. And then there's, uh, uh, be, behind that is a series of what's meant to show as, as tables and chairs, of uh, what would be the um, folks that typically sit up front, the board of selectmen, uh, the town administrator, finance director, finance committee, uh, and I'm sure I might be missing one or two, and I apologize for that. Um, but that's, that's what that is meant to show. Uh, we, we do know that that power um, will be provided by the snack shack, which is in the uh, lower left hand corner of, of, of the page and the plan as you see it. Um, so that, you know, where, where the moderator and town clerk are is, is a good location uh, for, for that. Um, I, I know Jamie has um, provided some comments as to, you know, speaker locations and, and video locations and, and it seems like uh, those things can be accommodated. Uh, pretty easily in the way that the plan is is laid out uh, as it is now. Um, but again, this is kind of just um, a, a, a conversation starter. So uh, happy to take any comments or uh, answer any questions. Thank you. Yeah, th uh, thank you, Griffin, for that presentation. I was finally able to get some facsimile of um, your diagram up on the screen right now. And uh, what's cut off that you can't see is in that lower left-hand corner. Uh, the snack shack, um, we're in discussions with the town clerk's office, but that may be suitable for check-in uh, and running along that fence there. Uh, a little bit of a cattle shoot, that's why we have the mask covering uh, order in place, but it could facilitate people getting in uh, very easily. If there's general public that aren't voters that wish to um, attend, we have them going down the other end and could end access that um, other end that Griffin talked about where the seats could be available. Um, I think most importantly, the moderator had asked for upwards of 400 seats. So you can see that um, using the alternating mechanism that Griffin's identified, we, uh, we can accommodate close to 500 people. The um, other points I'd want to make reference to is when we did the walkthrough, uh, and I'm not really sure when that photo was taken, but you can see the shadowing there. Uh, the intent, and the, this was um, the moderator himself sort of offering himself up, if you will, uh, he and the town clerk uh, will be uh, most exposed to the sunlight. 
uh, we're going to have tent and uh, some covering for them, but that the voters will have the sun to their back so that they can focus on the town meeting itself. Uh, given that where we expect the vernal equinox and sun to be, it may not be that difficult for everybody, but um, of course we want a nice, cool, calm, sunny day and get through it quickly. Oh, yeah. um, and again, uh, Griffin, I don't know, have you heard back from the moderator on uh, some of your items? Because I know that um, uh, the moderator did have some comments for, for Griffin on this. Uh, I may have missed it, but I haven't heard. Uh, I don't believe I've seen anything directly. I think I can pass something along tomorrow morning then. Um, and then really, um, as we progress through the warrant and through this process, um, we're going to advertise this quite heavily, meaning letting everybody know what the logistics are, is best place to park, best place to access, and, and some expectations for people. Um, I do want to point out, as you saw in Griffin's memo to me, that there's been some consternation. Um, could this impact negatively on the field? And Superintendent Carpenter assures us that uh, the use that we're proposing is something that the field can, can endure for the amount of time that we'll be there. Okay. Okay. Um, do we want to have any discussion around quorum at this point, Joe, or is that something? No, that's a, I was just waiting for a transition, Mr. Okay. Chairman, unless there were questions. Uh, but thank you for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. This evening, in a moment, as we go through the latest articles, I have updates from council on some language um, and just general updates to go through as you progress through the articles. Um, but in, in hearing from um, John Giorgio, he has confirmed that if we were to go with a reduced quorum, um, the board would have to agree uh, that you want to have that discussion. The moderator has indicated that he's willing to have the discussion and support a reduced quorum if that's the, where the board's going. Both parties have to be in agreement. Um, so I did take the, uh, the extra step of posting a notice that um, if the board is willing to discuss reduction of quorum, uh, the public has to be given seven days' notice, so I posted a notice uh, this morning that next week you would take that matter up. Okay. Um, Moderator Ford was unable to be here this evening to give his own thoughts on that, um, so he did um, provide uh, an email uh, that, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, he asked to be read into the record. Yeah. Um, he makes a statement to tonight's hearing. I confirm with the moderator that the hearing itself is next week, um, and he uh, appreciated that comment and says that his comments stand in relative to next week's hearing. Okay. Uh, so unless there's objection, uh, he indicates that he's not able to participate this evening, uh, but goes on to state that, um, uh, sorry, before I go there, the reduction of quorum, I don't know if I've said it yet, but unlike the first um, special act that was created, does not impact upon our warrant. So you can have as full of a warrant as you want, reduce quorum to make sure we have enough people there, and it will not affect the number of articles that we can talk about. And as you may recall, that was not only a concern of the moderator, um, but myself and several other people. So that's no longer a restriction for us. Uh, the moderator writes, recognizing that setting the quorum is customarily the province of the voters, I was initially hesitant to approve of a reduction. However, I believe the board has taken positive steps by locating the annual meeting outdoors designing the layout of the meeting to observe the, uh, to observe the social distancing requirements, working with the guidance of town hall staff, including the Board of Health regarding protocols to be followed during the meeting, including the requirement of masks, resulting in a safe environment in which to conduct the meeting. These steps were all taken in an effort to get as many voters to attend as possible, and I believe we will end up attracting in excess of the established quorum, which we know to be 150 voters, to the meeting. However, we fall, uh, if, we fall, if however we fall short of the established quorum, notwithstanding the efforts to create a safe and attractive meeting place, I understand the need to be able to conduct the town meeting in order to authorize the town to continue to function during the state of emergency. Accordingly, I would support a quorum reduction if the board so votes. Please enter this email into the record at tonight's hearings as my comments as moderator are as required by section 7A of Chapter 92 of the Acts of 2020. Thank you, Michael D. Ford, Town Moderator. And so, um, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the board would have to um, assent to having the discussion next week. Obviously, the moderator has made his um, feelings known, 
and that if the board were going to have this discussion next week, the public is notified that there's a, uh, a hearing would take place. It's been published in accordance with the acts of um, chapter 92 of the acts of 2020, and that the next step would be for you all to discuss it in public next week. Do, do you um, need just a general consensus from us this evening? As at this point, correct, that the board would be willing to enter into that discussion. I know yes. that I would. I, Michael, uh, Ed? Yeah. Yes. So, so the then board. that'll be on the agenda next week, and um, sometime after 6.30 you can get into that. And there'll be more information, but as you may already know, the board would then have the right to reduce quorum from anywhere from 149 people right down to 15 people. Right. So that was the last... Um, logistical item I had uh, before we got into the latest draft of uh, the warrant under um, item C. Yeah, let, let me just ask this, Joe, before you begin uh, to fill us in on each of these questions and we, and we decide whether or not to take a vote, um, I know that there are three people who have expressed a desire to speak on uh, 43, 44, and, 40, and also four, uh, two on 43 and one on 44. Um, shall we do that uh, after you, on, on, for example, on 43, you make the description of what it is and then let the folks speak at that point? Is that? I, I think that would be probably the best way to do it. And that's um, to let you know that um, following up on the discussion last uh, Tuesday, um, I directed staff to reach out and we've got at least two of the petitioners available to talk tonight about their articles. Okay. And I think the other one is a concerned citizen regarding an article. Okay. Um, so you're, you're going to lead us through these articles then? Correct. Okay. Yep. And so I'd also let the board know that you have um, uh, an additional item that I passed out this evening. It's, um, right. yeah, you've seen similar versions, uh, you know, the town meeting article certification process being what it is for any number of officials. This is um, a document that I've used over the years um, most, most recently as town clerk to then certify the votes of a town meeting. So what you're looking at and what we'll make public is the list of the articles. Um, I was updated over the weekend by the Finance Committee Chairman as to the actions taken by the, uh, the finance relative to these articles. So you'll have their information as to what their votes were or what their recommendations are. Um, in addition to that, I want to alert everyone to the fact that there is a new article. Um, it is a um, boilerplate uh, item that was required um, relative to contract negotiations that were concluded last year. So I'll, uh, there's a renumbering that took place, and I'll walk you through that. That article is Article 25, which I'll bring up for discussion tonight, and I believe the Finance Committee will take that up at their meeting on Thursday the 27th. Um, hoping to get as many articles uh, dispatched as we can tonight because the effort would be for the board to finalize the warrant, close the warrant, sign the warrant on the 31st, and then get that right over to Cape Cod Chronicle. That's really the latest we can get it to them for them to meet all of our requirements for redistribution. Yeah, and and um, uh, I, I want to thank you there, Joe, because I know we had an earlier date and you guys uh, uh, worked with the uh, Chronicle to give it, yeah. give us a little leeway. Yep. And, and thank, thank really, you to the Chronicle really as well. really appreciate their, their patience and understanding. Yeah. Um, and they've been great partners throughout the whole thing. Um, so you can see on the agenda, I've identified the articles that you had not yet taken uh, positions on. <coughs> as I mentioned, if you look at item number 14, that's related to the new article that I mentioned. Um, I will tell you that uh, John Giorgio and his review of the articles um, Friday and over the weekend, he has some uh, scrivener changes that I will make that I wouldn't be getting into this evening. They relate to articles you've already adopted. Mm -hmm. It's more housekeeping. Um, so I think what might be appropriate at this point, Mr. Chairman, is um, I, I don't know if the board is uh, in a position, given your numbers, to get into uh, the operating budget articles of 5, 6, and 7. Um, you can see the numbers there. Those are, are hard, fast numbers at this point. Uh, you can see that the Finance Committee uh, has indicated for all of those except for the Cape Cod technical budget that they um, no recommendation pending further information. Um, so if you'd like, I can just uh, identify some additional articles that you, the board might be disposed or might be inclined to dispose of this evening, if that works. I'll open for a comment, uh, Michael. I, I think uh, I, I would say we should do as many as we can, but why don't we start with the list at hand and ask questions as we go. Okay. Uh, 
if, if that's okay with Joe, if we sure. yep. dispatch Warrant. these and then bring back other numbers. Right. Yeah. So with that, I move that we accept, adopt, and include in the warrant town officers and committees. Second. All uh, those in favor? Well, any, any, uh, you know, uh, we got a motion and a second. Any comment? Okay, with, with no comment. Uh, Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye. So, it's unanimous. Thank you. I move you. that we accept, adopt, and include in the warrant reports of town officers and committees. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, any comment? Hearing no comment. I'll take a vote. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye. So it's unanimous. I move that we accept, adopt, and include in the warrant elected official salaries. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any comment? Hearing no comment. Take a vote. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye. So it's unanimous. I have a question on four before I call a motion. <laughs> um, Joe, procedurally, can we call a motion with a uh, amount to be determined, or should we wait until we get a, an amount? I think I, I would ask on this one that the board hold off okay. until next week till we you can finalize okay. that. Okay, I will. will hold off on. If, if I'm, I'm sorry, Ed. Asking for <laughs> I, I understand that it's not only we'll, on this article we'll not only be able need to identify an amount. But what that amount funds? Correct. So we'll have to. Yeah, there'd be a result in the table that would identify that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm going to go to article. All right. I move that we accept, adopt, and include in the warrant the Cape Cod Regional Technical School District budget in the amount of one million seven hundred thirty-seven thousand seven hundred eighty-nine. I have a second. I'll second. We have a uh, motion and a second. Uh, any comment? Hearing no comment. Uh, Ed. Aye. Michael. Aye. And I'm an aye. So it's unanimous on the uh, Article Seven. I move you know, to be, go ahead. I, I apologize. I, I know it doesn't pertain to the next one, but I do want to draw the board's attention that um, if we proceed, as you can see here. Or, or is listed here, I should say. At the bottom of the spreadsheet, you'll notice the free cash amount uh, that's available that has been certified of $1,446,115. Yep. The, the present roster exceeds that amount by the 31000 you see there. So um, I think we just need to uh, tread lightly. And, and the, the difference, if I could identify it, will come into play under Article uh, 12, which is facility maintenance and repair. So um, other than that, I, I think the board could continue on um, as your comfort level allows. Thank you. Okay. All right. I move that we accept, adopt, and include in the warrant, warrant the water department budget, the amount of $4,291,075. Is there a second? second? Okay. We got a... Uh, Motion and a second. Uh, any comment? We'll go to a vote. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye, so it's unanimous. Uh, question on the next uh, article before I read it. Uh, there's an amount of 272932 here. Uh, previous discussion uh, has alluded to that they may not need that. I guess the question I would have, should we, should we hold off on that uh, pending a conversation because we're not going to have as much budget needs in that due to lack of homes being hooked up and going to Chatham? I think that's a fair point. Okay. Do so we have an idea when we might know what the, the new estimate of needs is going to be? I'll reach out to Dan first thing in the morning because we need to have it circled back by Thursday or Friday of this week anyway. Okay. That would be a, a way to save some money from uh, the current deficit if we could knock that back. Given that the expenditures in available free cash is running in the negative, it would be a way to cover that. The 31000 yeah. 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 Might be the target number. Yep. All right. Uh, with that, I'm going to move. 
Uh, I would ask that you not take action on the capital outlay plan yet. I know the Finance Committee has, but I'm still trying to put it all together. Could, uh, I'd like to ask a question on this. Uh, uh, Joe, um, has the Finance Committee um, contacted you as we discussed in the uh, subcommittee meeting relative to their version of the, uh, the capital plan and are you comfortable with, uh, you know, that you have the right, uh, you have the right numbers from them? Yeah, I, I think we're there. I just want to be able to, you know, the, this effort took me right up until meeting time tonight okay. to get everything together. I just, uh, I've been able to analyze as much as I could with this spreadsheet. I'd just like the opportunity to pull it all together one last time. Okay. Jamie, is that, am I showing that? Yeah. Um, Joe, or through you, Chair. Yeah. A little technical glitch for one moment here. Sorry, technical difficulties. Yeah, made themselves an organizer. So uh, there's an individual that is sharing their screen and we need them to stop doing that. And I, I don't want to drop them from the call, but um, there's a Roseanne Shapiro that's on. Oh, if you have to, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to have to have you call back in, please. Article 11, Joe. Are we still waiting? Sorry about that, Mike. Sorry about that, um, board members. Um, okay, with Article 11? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry for the delay. No problem. Uh, I move that we accept, adopt, and include in the warrant capital items funded from free cash, items under 50000 um, The amount on that is 42. Uh, uh, the amount of that is for police, taser replacement, year three of three, 14910 Fire, air pack, capital contribution, 27389 for a total of 42299 We have a second on that? Any questions? Does this still um, include our share of uh, the much larger expenditure on the... Uh, Air packs? Air packs. I will read the explanation if you want. Okay. So the explanation, the total cost of air packs is 575165 The amount is offset by a grant that the town earned in the amount of 547776 The town must demonstrate funding for training as well as amount funded by the town through our capital plan in order to meet the grant requirements. The training amount, $7,388.82, is covered in the fire department's operating budget, and the article above covers the capital expenditure. So I think that is the wording that you wanted, Ed, that we were discussing last week. I thought it was, anyway. <laughs> because the purchase of the item is an item Oh, I, okay. I thought you just. But. Because I you know, Did you? It was an, a capital item with a value of less than $50,000. That will make the thing. And, you know, so the funding source becomes irrelevant. The cost of the item. Joe, did you understand? Uh, what, what Ed is saying is that the actual overall cost of the EPEX is uh, in excess of 500000 So the actual uh, cost is not. Uh, items up to fifty thousand. 
uh, but certainly exceeds that, and it should be a separate. So I can I can certainly do that. There was also discussion about whether it should even be titled items under fifty thousand because of the charter change. And I know that if you look at the recommendation from the finance committee on the adopt the plan, uh, they've made the statement that uh, the finance committee um, has. Uh, finance committee has incorporated the new rules and into the plan and voted to move that plan forward so they've done that one but they didn't do this one to be honest so I can do whatever the board wants as far as that article goes but if we're if we're operating under the new charter requirement there no longer is that concept of items under 50k yeah Michael I, I you know my Last week's comment remains for me that this is how this was done last year. The same, I think it was the same article because it was year two of three, uh, at least for the taser replacement. I don't know uh, air packs, but um, given the time and given the time it would take the town administrator to change this, um, I think we should proceed as it's in the warrant now uh, in the matter of time. And I do hear Ed's point, but I think the explanation clearly states what we're doing and that the bulk of this is paid for by grant. So our purchase, in my mind, is still um, $42,299. I would just add that your, your statement is spot on insofar as this article was carried over from past year in the same format. So I didn't choose to segregate it this way. It's how the, the original warrant was built. Items like this, it's, just, it's a recurring objection. <laughs> understood. <laughs> understood. I, I'm I'm more um, no. befuddled by the charter change. Yeah. So, uh, uh, in order to get be able to, to vote on this, I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further comments? Hearing none, I'll take a vote. Ed. I think I abstain. Michael. I'm an I. I'm an I. Two zero one. Passes. If I may, on article, do we want to deal with this? Okay. No, Ed, can you speak up a little? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, article twelve, uh, Joe. Did you want to hold on this because of the thirty-one thousand, or could my motion be um, to take that thirty-one thousand out of what would be article nine? see where it shakes out so to answer the question no I wouldn't I wouldn't want you to hold off but I also wouldn't want you to take that action what I wanted to do under this one is explain um, where I'm coming on this because facilities maintenance would have had um, this item um, and the subsidy for this cultural center and so I was going to talk about that and I don't know if that confuses the issue if the board would rather hold off until next Monday, I would have no objection. I mean, if we can get it done, I don't, I don't mind having a conversation. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So as you'll see in the draft um, explanation, the, um, uh, this was a discussion that I mentioned last week where uh, the finance director had conversations with the um, DPW director and facilities maintenance manager, as I did as well. And what we came back with is they're, they're willing to defer the two roof projects for both Brooks Library and Five Bells Neck. So those were originally planned in there. We're going to defer those. And then the other part of it is, is the, the subsidy, as you all know, relative to the cultural center. Uh, being mindful of the discussions that the board was having earlier about revolving funds, the revolving fund as of July 31st for cultural center is roughly $300,000. So I'd be looking to do a dollar amount um, close to the 100,000 subsidy to, to at least get us something for the bulk of this fiscal year. And that would not require an article. That just is the execution of the revolving fund. And so that's really what's in play with this particular article. It's two deferments that the DPW director is okay with um, and just trying to figure out the subsidy uh, mechanism for the cultural center. And so the 55,000 from capital, excuse me, from free cash, is needed for this particular item. It is not uh, reflected in the 
Finance Committee vote, that's why you'll see the difference in their column versus my column. Michael? Can we, can we put an amount in of less than 100,000? Um, prior discussions that we've had uh, related to the Cultural Center and the uh, subsidy uh, was originally, it, originally it was 125,000 or 150,000. That number's come down since we started renting it. And it was uh, two, two town meetings ago, maybe three, when town meeting gave us five years to try and make that building work. Um, we had said we were going to reduce that amount as, as we built up money from the rentals. So is it, is it um, I guess, whose position is it that we need it to be 100000 Can we drop that? So the 100000 was a carryover from the previous administrator's capital plan, and then the question really became how do we want to fund it? It was originally 100000 through free cash. And has there been any conversation? If I may. Please. Has there been any conversation with Carolyn uh, and Sean and anyone else in this as to whether or not we need the 100000 anymore? So I did have conversations. Um, I know Sean had a conversation with Carolyn before Sean and I uh, met with Link. Um, I know uh, going from memory that um, Sean will tell you that, uh, and I don't disagree, um, I use the phrase keep the lights on, he said the bare minimum. So his bare minimum gets to utilities and some minor standard repairs throughout the fiscal year and that's anywhere from 90 to 115. And so that's why I stayed on the 100,000. Okay. Um, that does not factor in costs related to personnel which would come through the revolving fund uh, and other uh, items. It is utilities and minor repairs. Okay. So it would be wise to keep this hundred in there for now. Uh, when you say keep the hundred in there, keep the hundred subsidy for the cultural center, the, the top piece, not to modify that number now. Not to modify the number, correct, and really to settle on a funding source. And so, like I said, right now, the, I'm, I'm leaning towards the funding source of the revolving fund because there is a balance that allows for it. I know there's been a lot of discussion about our revolving funds. Um, and more, this is one of those many other items that I chalk up to. Uh, on Monday, September 28th, we're going to get right into fiscal year 22. So I'm hopeful that that would work. Ed, you have a comment? Yeah. I'm, we're ta talking about Article 12? Correct. Yes. Yes. And you keep on talking about 100,000. All I see is 55,000. That's all that the article has right now for uh, repair fund. So where does the 100000 come from? So the 100000 is referenced in the explanation. Yes. The dollar amount's not there yet because I didn't settle on the dollar amount yet, nor did I know the balance of the revolving fund at the time of print. So if you're looking at the explanation, the explanation might say going forward, the cultural center subsidy of $100,000 will be funded via their revolving fund, which had a balance of, um, Carol had told me this evening, I, I believe it was, just over 300,000 as of July 31st. Okay, so the 100,000 isn't going to be approved in this article. It, it, it was originally planned to be, correct. It's, it would be removed. Taken out. Okay. Okay, that's good. Um, but going back to what isn't in the article, what's, what were the costs of the roof repairs? Um, I believe the roof repairs, I think Brooks Library was 148, and I want to say that Bell's Neck was um, I'm going off of memory. I want to say over 30 at least. Okay. Any further discussion? Well, yeah. you know, letting roofs continue to leak is just, you know, is really bad economy. But I, I understand the yeah. position we're in. But uh, I think that needs to be need to make a commitment that. Uh, it's the top of the list next year, because especially in a library. Yeah, you know we uh, we had a leak in the library at our new high school, and uh, it uh, the insurance I think settlement was a little over million two hundred thousand um, with all the damage that was done. So. All set. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we accept and adopt facility maintenance and repair fund. A second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? 
Hearing none, take a vote. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye, so it's unanimous. Move that we accept, adopt, and include in the warrant replace fire department ambulance. Second. In the amount of uh, estimated cost of $378,000. Got a motion and a second. Any uh, further comment? Hearing none, I'll take a vote. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye, so it's unanimous. The board had already voted on uh, items 14 through. Articles 14 through 21. Um, the so I don't I, I know how I missed it because I had so many versions. But uh, you'll see Article 17 makes reference to um, a debt exclusion. Uh, that's obviously old language. So I'm asking council to help uh, guide me on. Um, I think it's going to be as simple as identifying the. Uh, in the article that the uh, road maintenance program is going to be funded through free cash, so that that the board is uh, the board and the finance committee have already approved those, but the language will change to reflect the fact that we are not seeking debt exclusion override um, or debt for these purchases. Okay. okay. So what's our next? Yeah. So the the next one. Um, I'm assuming that the board is not going to take action yet on 22 and 24. Those are the pending zoning bylaws. You obviously endorsed the um, West Harwich Special District, given how that um, process started through the board. Um, are well, we you don't. inclined to take action on those items? We don't have them listed in the agenda tonight anyway, so I don't think we can. That settles that. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next item is that new article that I mentioned, Article 25 which appears on thirty one. Stand by. Uh, just uh, if I can. Please. The um, zoning articles, those public hearings, will we have that information by next week so that we can vote on them? I don't believe so, not on both. So of them. we really need to vote them. And then could Finance Committee vote? So those? another procedural question that I'm led to ask. I know Finance Committee has that ability to do um, no recommendation pending further information. Does the board do those kind of recommendations as well? Or? We haven't since I've been here, but no. Ed would probably know so, better. Um, yes, we've, uh, in the past, n not had any recommendation or opinion on certain items mm -hmm. um, either because we didn't have enough information or there was uh, it was not really an article that uh, rose to the need for a, an opinion uh, do, do we want to uh, utilize that Consensus of the board on this or on these these articles? These are the the zoning. Yeah, the zoning bylaws amendments. Joe, will that? Sorry. Sorry, Michael. Joe, Go. will that give you enough? Uh, if we do that, can we then just assume that it's going to be in the warrant? Yes. Sure. Uh, that, we, that we that we vote those. Okay. So, what article numbers are those? Uh, they are um, twenty. 22, and 24. 22, 23. You already took action on 23, but oh, the chairman yeah. is correct, though. There was no notice given on those. 22 and 24. Mm -hmm. As I said, they are not on the agenda for this evening, so I'm not sure. What oh, you're right. Let's vote them next week. Sorry. Yeah, that we have a ahead. the ability to do that. Yeah. You know, I guess you know, the multifamily uh, bylaw. Um, the one question I have, and, and I still haven't quite gotten um, under, understand what they're doing to it, but it, it appears that um, in some z what, what's being proposed in some zones would require minimum square feet for certain multifamily units, you know studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, 
foot but in certain zones but in other zones there was no requirement for minimum square footage and, and uh, you know it, it, it seems if you're, you're going to require minimum square footage there's some theoretical reason why you're doing it um, I on the other hand feel that you know we ought to, you ought to allow whoever is building this thing to define build something that he thinks is going to be habitable habitable and sell and uh, provide the market need that for affordable housing that we are and, and putting in these odd constraints of minimum square footage um, may be run counter to that. Um, and wow. So we may be basically shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, well, I guess we have between now and uh, next week to address this. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll take those up, Michael. If you if you're willing to continue. Yep, I'm going to move that we accept, adopt, and include in the warrant, adopt MGL Chapter 33 and 59, pay for police officers in service in reserves, National Guard. Second. And that would uh, that's um, Chapter 53, Section 59. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll take a vote. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye, so it's unanimous. Article 38. So 30, Article 30 uh, pertain to the revolving fund. I Article think. 37 would be the next open item. Well, and again, again it's not, it's not, it's not on, not the, on uh, the warrant. Uh, again, it's not on the agenda. Uh, correct. Yeah, I, the Finance Committee took action on Article 38 and um, recommended and um, on our 38 and took no action or, or needs additional information and, and really um, I'm stuck on this one to be quite honest because I know there was discussion before by other board members um, as it relates to revolving funds yes. and uh, what we want to do for setting the limits if anything um, I'm familiar with 4453 and a half and uh, know that if the board were not to authorize spending, then um, over time those would revert back to the town through the general fund, I believe. Um, but this was more to get a discussion item for the board and perhaps for next Monday night. Okay, I, I do know that uh, uh, Selectman Howell has concerns relative to this and I, I would imagine he would like to participate in the discussion. That's what I was going to recommend. We bring this back next week when Don's here because this was one that he's specifically interested in. Yes. So, uh, which one? Was it's uh, no, number 15 on your uh, under C, Article 38, Amendment to the Code of the Town of Howard uh, General Bylaws, uh, Chapter 8, Departmental Revolving Funds. And the, uh, the Finance Committee has uh, waited for further information, so no action. So we should delay that until yeah. Monday. And uh, Mr. Chairman, that um, draws uh, a conclusion to my items this evening. You'll see that the um, next three that have no recommendations yet from the board are the petitioned articles. I know that Danielle received information from at least one of the petitioners to provide you with uh, notes that were uh, sent to us this afternoon. So you should have those in front of you. And Mr. Chairman, as you've indicated, there are at least two different petitioners um, ready to speak to their articles. Okay. Uh, so uh, the first would be Article 43. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm having trouble with the numbers. Well, I'm going on what we have for our agenda tonight. So okay. uh, that's, you know, because yeah, it's my understanding that that's what we can discuss. No, I, I, I know, but I'm, you know, trying to find the different things, and there seems to be... No, I, I'm probably confusing it by saying 17, but it's 17 on the, on the old business. Uh, it's actually Article 43, Commercial Single-Use Plastic Water Bottle Ban. Okay. And... Uh, under that, we do have uh, two individuals from the general public okay. that would like to comment. Uh, Joe, I don't know whether you wanted to say anything first or. 
Well, just that I, there's a Scrivener's error on the agenda. Those numbers are incorrect. Ed's right. 17 should be 42, 18 should be 43, and 19 should be 44. Okay. <laughs> Other than that, I nailed it. But realistically, it's, it's, you can still go by, because we're really not using article numbers. No, right. You no. can use those agenda item numbers. Use right. the agenda item. Yep. I was just trying to find right, the right, right. place. Uh, in yeah, so I'm thoroughly <laughs> confusing you, I can tell. <laughs> Procedurally on these, if I may. Yes, please. Um, we, we, uh, I noticed the Finance Committee uh, IP'd these and definitely postponed. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to. These are in the warrant anyway, Joe, correct? Correct. So we're going to hear from the petitioners tonight, or some, but we don't have to take an action on this. Correct. No. Right. They're going in anyway. Right. Okay. Yeah. So why don't we uh, go ahead, Jamie, with the uh, individuals. Let's start with Patrick Otten uh, and his comments on the, um, uh, the uh, single-use uh, plastic water bottle ban. Okay, Patrick, if you could hit uh, star six on your phone uh, to unmute yourself, and uh, we can welcome you into the meeting. Hello, this is Patrick Otten. Hello, Patrick. Hear me clearly? Yes. We can hear you, yes. Yes. Good. Uh, Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and town administrator, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak with respect to the proposed commercial single-use plastic water bottle ban. Okay, so you know, let me begin just by asking a couple of questions. You know, why do you live on Cape Cod? You know, why not Gary, Indiana, Pittsburgh, Louisiana, Texas, downwind from an oil refinery or next door to an oil well? You live on Cape Cod because of the environment. Our oceans, our beaches, our woodlands. That's why you're here. So what is it about plastic? There are many positive uses and applications for plastic. But what about single-use plastics? You use it for 30 seconds, but it persists for over 1,000 years afterwards. We did not ask for plastic bottles. There was no legislation or bylaws requiring them. No, it's a corporate, Pepsi, Coke, Nestle, et cetera, idea for making money. The water in the bottle is, is 10,000 times more expensive than the water out of your tap. We also know the purity of our tap water. You don't have a clue of what's in bottled water. There are 50 billion bottles worldwide every year, 30 billion in the U.S. That's 1,000 per second of plastic water bottles. For disposal costs, pre-COVID and the single stream that we're now experiencing for disposal, to dispose of plastic, the cost of the town, $200 per ton, and $85 profit for, for recycling aluminum and $35 profit for recycling paper. And that's from Link Cooper, DPW administrator, okay? Today, there's more plastic in our environment. Every square inch of the earth has plastic. The oceans are filled with plastic. All life is impacted by plastic. It's estimated we breathe and ingest a credit card amount of plastic every week, all right? So why use plastic bottles? 40 years ago, did mom buy cases of bottled water? No, you, you grew up just fine and healthy, alive without plastic bottles. So what's the alternative? Using your own personal reusable, refillable water bottle at home that you clean and that you take care of and you fill yourself. So one of the concerns are costs, but there's multiple ways to assess costs. One of the questions that came up from the finance committee was what's the cost for retailers? Another question is what's the cost to our personal health? What is the cost to our environment? What's the cost to switch from plastic to personal containers, cans, or paper, right? We know that the economic cost of plastic pollution for tourism, fisheries, and shipping is $8 billion a year, okay? Across the globe, India, Thailand, China, the EU, this country, our, this state, our neighbors are saying no to plastic. Last year, 11 towns out of 15 passed the municipal ban on plastic containers. This year, 11 towns will have the commercial proposal on their 
town warrant. The other four will have the municipal ban on their town warrants. Okay. So the plastic bottle ban, commercial plastic bottle ban is a follow on carry on from last year's movement of a municipal ban. So think of Cape Cod, the environment, our health, your health, and let's make our woodlands, our oceans, our roadsides, our parking lots, plastic free. We can make Cape a desirable destination resource. I'm going to ask for your support for the commercial ban of unflavored, non-carbonated plain water in plastic bottles, less than one gallon. So, I know change is difficult, but I think this is one we need to make now. So I appreciate your time and uh, would be open to your questions and comments. So thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board? I have none. Okay. Well, you know, um, last year I supported the ban on sale of uh, beverages and uh, things. That, uh, in uh, activities on town property um, and unfortunately uh, we weren't it was to be implemented this year um, and the impact of it most um, mostly was going to be on craft fairs uh, events like that um, and uh, we had developed a, I, I thought would have been a, a reasonable solution to get away from using plastic bottles, but uh, unfortunately we haven't been able to put that into effect um, to see how it uh, works. Um, uh, you know, I think given the uh, scientist, scientific data, um, Moving away from the use of plastics is something we need to do, um, but uh, uh, so personally, I'll be supporting uh, uh, this uh, action on uh, town meeting. But uh, I don't know if that's something uh, the board wants to take a uh, a position on. Um, uh, Patrick, thanks so much for your adv advocacy um, and all the hard work you put into this um, uh, and, the, and the notes that you have sent along to help educate us. Uh, it's very helpful. Um, I uh, know we have one more individual who would like to speak on this uh, this evening, uh, Bonnie Bridges. So, uh, Bonnie, if you could uh, do star six. Uh, uh, do star six. To unmute yourself. Yes, I, I've done that. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Bonnie. Please, uh, please proceed. Please, uh, please proceed. Okay. Um, at the present time, there is nearly unanimous agreement that climate change is a reality, and there's much talk of urgency for climate action. Uh, the commercial single-use plastic water bottle ban provides an opportunity to take action in a way that will not only affect greenhouse gas emissions, but it will also raise awareness of the inconsistency between our daily habits and our, our desire to lower carbon footprint. Recent studies have overwhelmingly proven that gas greenhouse gases are released during plastic production. And more recently, they, they continue to be released while in use and as they degrade. Plastics have a significant greenhouse gas footprint and estimates that the plastic industry will continue will contribute 20% of the overall global greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 if we do not take action. Specifically to daily life, plastic um, is a significant threat to our Cape environment. It's in the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. Why would we not take a stand on this issue? As a community, we have a responsibility to protect our environment, and as a community within a nation, we have a responsibility to protect the broader environment as well. The commercial single-use plastic water bottle ban not only increases awareness and facilitates action in Harwich, but it provides visibility on the issue of national and global concern. 
All change begins locally with civil engagement. The actions being sought in Harwich are also being addressed in all other Cape Towns, as Patrick um, said. Collective action as a united Barnstable County on the issue of the environment will be significant for the changes that need to be made. Here are a few of other reasons why taking a stand on plastic is needed. Plastic is a human health issue. It is linked to premature, de premature death, fertility issues, ADHD, endocrine di disruption, autoimmune disease, and cardiovascular disease. Plastic is harming our environment. Animal life is dying from the ingestion of plastic. We've all seen pictures of the whales and, and marine life. Plastic is an expense. There are alternatives as canned water that provide revenue where plastic is, is cost to dispose of. On a ton base, uh, basis, aluminum will generate $85 and $200 for disposal of plastic, both of which Patrick mentioned. There is no valid reason for not embracing the commercial single-use plastic water bottle ban. The cost of plastic in monetary and non-monetary terms significantly outweigh the benefits. The commercial single-use plastic water bottle ban is the right action to take and needs to be taken now. We look forward to your support. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Bonnie. We appreciate your comments. Um, as I'm going to ask the board here, do we want to uh, uh, take a vote on a sense here? Or, you know, I have a motion. I have a motion. May, may I interject for one moment? Uh, yes, uh, is that Patrick again? Is Patrick again? Yes, this is Patrick. Bonnie needs to mute herself. Bonnie, you need to mute yourself. Go ahead, Patrick. I just wanted to say that. Uh, all the other boards from the other 11 towns, except for Falmouth, have uh, have voted in favor of this commercial plastic bottle ban. Well, we're at the un unfortunate uh, disadvantage of not having all of our uh, members here tonight. Um, yes. Uh, uh, yes. You know, I, I, since we, uh, I don't have a motion, um, I, I will indicate my own. Uh, feelings relative to this, which is I strongly support it, and I appreciate the work and the comments that you all have made. Um, uh, you know, so uh, we have a sense of two of the selectmen here tonight, and uh, whether we eventually take a vote on this, uh, we will uh, bring that up with our colleagues uh, when they return to the meeting next week. Okay. Okay, let's uh, move along here to. Um, 44, is that correct, Michael? Uh, yeah. That one is, yep, rescind the uh, action taken at uh, annual town meeting May 6 for Article 50. Not sure. Joe, can you give more color to this? Uh, just that it's a petition to Article that's seeking to rescind uh, what is now a general bylaw. Uh, this article passed last year at town meeting, uh, excuse me, Article 50 passed at the 2019 annual town meeting, I think by a vote of 235 to 134. So mm -hmm. um, it was adopted, it was uh, heavily debated, and the petitioners are looking to rescind that action. And they, I believe the article was on the plastic, it was the plastic bottle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really, okay. Yeah, the yeah. title on that was that was uh, containers. Yeah. Okay. Specifically. I believe we have one individual uh, uh, who would like to speak on this, Jamie, if I'm correct. Okay. Uh, well, if Janelle uh, Brown is on the line, please uh, star six uh, so you can speak to this issue. Okay. I guess we. There they go. They unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. Is that Janelle? Hi. How are you? It's Janelle. Good. Um, please, uh, please proceed. 
Okay, so I wrote this article before I knew that the prior article was written at all. Um, and if you read the verbiage that I presented, um, I decided that I would uh, write this petition article because of the discriminatory language uh, that was passed by last town meeting. Um, in that, it, the article that was passed only uh, subjected the township, uh, town property, and then entities that used the town property to the banning of um, the single-use containers. And um, being involved with many nonprofits, Little League and football, a lot of sports, craft fairs, as Ed had mentioned, um, I noticed that there was a financial burden being put on these small organizations that were really, you know, just trying to provide a drink for our kids who are playing sports or for uh, craft fair goers or what have you. And, um, you know, aluminum cans of water and cardboard boxes of water are significantly more money um, to purchase in the first place. And um, the other part of it was, um, many people probably would not necessarily purchase the water anymore. They would just bring their own. So the financial burdens uh, would be felt by these nonprofits and by the craft fairs and whatnot. And I just felt like also at the rec center, for instance, in the after school program, no longer could they use the vending machine. So I know my son who, you know, spends a whole long day at school and drinks the water that I give him in his water bottle and then goes over to the rec center for after school sports, then all of a sudden doesn't have access to Gatorade anymore, for instance, where he wants a little bit of sugar to you know, give him a little bit of energy or other things that are in plastic bottles beyond water because it wasn't just water for this past article uh, number 50 last year. Um, so I thought, you know, the verbiage wasn't correct in, in just wanting to reduce the use of plastic or ban the use of plastic. And so I wrote this petition article for this year, not knowing that Article 43 was in existence. So um, regardless of the fact that Article 43 is in existence, if that passes, I still think we need to rescind this Article 50 uh, from last year because the new article, should it pass, will kind of be the umbrella. And we don't need this anymore. Um, but to only have something that affects the township, I just think it's wrong. And also the fact that, like for instance, DPW workers this summer, they can't go out and buy a case of water and then you know go out on the road. It's not like we have water fountains anymore. Like when I was a kid, there were water fountains everywhere and on all the parks and playing fields. White House Field had one, Brooks Park had two or three. They don't, we don't have water fountains anymore. So um, yeah, I guess that's really it. I think I've said enough. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, mm -hmm. Do we wanna take any action on this? Uh, no? no? I, I don't think so. I, you know, um, we didn't, as I indicated, we didn't have any of the Cranberry Festival activities this year, but last year, um, as one of the community organizations, we did implement this and to provide folks with uh, um, uh, water, we got uh, a, uh, several, uh, a couple of large 10 gallon uh, thermoses um, and would uh, put a couple bags of ice in and fill it with water and uh, have a stack of uh, paper cups next to it and uh, I think the uh, public attending our festivals uh, were uh, quite pleased that they were able to get a drink of water without having to pay two dollars for a 33 cent bottle <laughs> of water. Um, you know, it, it did represent a, a loss of revenue for, you know, because we would set, used to sell the water, but I think uh, in terms of uh, uh, customer appreciation, we uh, probably made up for it. Yeah. Well, I guess we won't take any action. Yeah, on that does make sense for cranberry harvest, yep. Thank you, Janelle. Um, we won't take mm -hmm. any action this evening, and uh, we'll move ahead uh, with the next one, Michael. 
All right, next one would be the Article 45, New Climate Policy, which uh, I believe last week we heard it was going to change to a resolution. We did any, hear that, that's there correct. Is there any, word, is there any word? Yeah, was there any word on that, Joe? Um, I do know that um, Danielle had reached out. I, I don't know if the individual is on the phone now, but someone indicated no, they were going to call in. No, we don't have anyone on the phone for that. So, um, I don't believe we'll take any action on this this evening. So. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. My name is Mickey Kearns, and I'm here. Okay, uh, Jamie. Uh, your name again was, please? Uh, Mickey Kearns. Okay, please uh, please go ahead, Nikki. I apologize for not having your name and calling it. Well, that's okay. Uh, I, I want to thank you for inviting me to speak about the climate action petition. Uh, with me uh, tonight, um, we also have, for, for, from the Harvard Climate Action Network, we have um, Roseanne Shapiro and Deborah Ennis. And but we would like to ask you, for a postponement. Uh, we were hoping to talk about this because we are trying to change the wording from a bylaw to a resolution. And uh, John Chory is going to help me with it. And so we were hoping that we could have some time to talk about the, the petition this week and then present uh, next Monday night at your meeting. Okay, Joe, Joe would that work? Uh... For them to be able to do that sure um it obviously changes the effect of what they were looking to do that would have to be indefinitely postponed at town meeting right and a resolution has no effect if you will it's a sentiment of the town meeting right so whether the board wanted to hear that discussion next week is yeah. we have a sense here sure. sure yeah michael you okay yeah yeah no we're fine with that we're fine with that uh, coming back next week um uh, as you change it to a resolution. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Um, okay, <laughs> that's, that's the ones that we were going to address this evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, under... if I could, just before you conclude that. Surely. Um, I did also want to follow up. We talked last week about um, consent agenda and consent calendar. Um, John Giorgio has offered to create a, a motion uh, that can be made from the floor at town meeting to try and capsulate those rather than us go through the effort of assuming um, he'll have that motion ready. Okay. So between that and the reduced quorum, we should be able to have an expeditious meeting. That sounds good. That sounds good. Uh, moving along to contracts, uh, discussion and possible vote to approve phase two, contract one, change order number two for Robert B. Hour Company, Inc., in the amount of Thirty-six thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight dollars to be signed by the uh, chairman of the board of selectmen. So, Mr. Uh, chairman, if I may, uh, Griffin Ryder is on the call. Uh, you can see his memos in the packet, which yes. um, I agree with. But if the board has any questions about the change orders, he's prepared to speak to them. Okay, Michael. I move that we approve uh, Phase Two Contract One Change Order Number Two for Robert B. Hour Company Inc in the amount of $36,768 to be signed by the Board of Selectmen Chairman. I have a second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, do we have any discussion? I no, just wanted to point out to the public that this does fit into the 5% uh, contingency, so this is a, a normal change. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Uh, we have a uh, motion and a second. Uh, we'll move to a vote. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye. It's uh, unanimous. Stephen, I'm just going to read the next one. Sure, that'd be great. I'm going to move to approve phase two, contract two, change order number one for RJV Construction Corporation in the amount of $33,188 to be signed by the Board of Selectmen Chairman. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, do we have any comment? Michael? Just one to ask, um, and, and not um, next week, because clearly we have to get the warrant done. But I would like to get an uh, update on the East Harwich sewer project, where both companies stand, what's left to be done for work, what's left uh, in the contingency funds, uh, when we can expect to be done, hookups, as much as we, much information, Joe, as we can get from uh, Dan and yep. Griffin and yourself. 
for the residents of East Tower, which as to when that's going to button up, um, including what neighborhoods aren't going to be finished because they, they sure. weren't part of. I know there's two neighborhoods that are quite confused because some of the roads in the neighborhood were done and the other ones weren't. So if we could get an overall, um, after we finish the warrant process, that sure. would be great. So. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we we have a uh, motion and a second to uh, take a vote. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye, so it's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Griffin, for the work on that. Thanks, Griffin. Uh, we move on to the town administrator's report. Joe? Uh, so two items um, very quickly, Mr. Chairman. The first one is sending around for your signatures. Uh, as you may recall, there was a change of managers um, for 554 Street Bar LLC doing business as three monkeys. That's been approved by the ABCC, so it needs the board's signatures. And Ed, am I taking these back? Yeah. yeah those are fine. And then uh, the other item actually, um, and it ties into um, the topic, uh, somewhat to the topic that Selectman McCaskill had just mentioned. So we know that next week is August 31st. What we may not be mindful of, because I know I keep missing it, is Labor Day is uh, September 7th. So I did want to get a sense of the board as to what um, your plans would be for that week for a meeting. Um, mindful that I've asked you to take some time to spend with my daughters before they um, travel off to the classroom. Okay. So something to think about for perhaps next week, but just yeah. wanted to put it out there that um, Absolutely. amazingly, one way or the other, September is right around the corner. It certainly is. Uh, that concludes my report. Great. Selectman's report. Michael? I have nothing. Ed? I don't have anything either. Well, thanks very much. Neither do I. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? To adjourn.